The Nano Plus is a drone with sensational video and photo quality, although in many cases there are some strange choices made by the developers and the interface is often quite quirky. I know a lot of you are very much into panorama photography, so in this video I will analyze in depth how this functionality has been implemented and how to make the most of it. In AutoSky, the app of the Nano Plus, we choose the panel mode by scrolling on the vertical menu to the left of the shutter. We are presented with the choice of sphere, wide angle, landscape and portrait. Then in the settings we select the camera tab, where we can specify whether we want to save the individual photos as JPEG or as RAW. It is not possible to save one copy in each format, which would be handy, we will see why later on. I must admit that I much prefer DJI Fly App, the interface for DJI drones, where most settings are in a single window. Here we have to constantly go from one window to another, not very handy. The next thing we notice is that in panorama mode we don't have a choice for manual mode. We can only shoot in auto mode, and this is a serious issue, as manual mode is the one that gives the best results. But even worse is the fact that we cannot modify the exposure value and this is a big no-no. Considering also that Nano Plus in auto mode has a huge tendency to overexpose. Kudos to Hotel for the extraordinary quality of footage and photo that the Nano Plus can produce. But it must be said that no care at all was put into the interface by the developers and in my opinion they should redesign it entirely from scratch. Let's try a pan of starting with raw files. I'm concerned not only because of the auto exposure without EV compensation, which will certainly result in a huge overexposure, but also the raw files of the Nano Plus have a strong vignette and at times a green cast, not easy to correct. Therefore, I have the feeling that it will be easier to work with JPEG. In sphere mode, 24 photos are taken. I immediately notice that the process is slower, as it takes a minute and a half against around 30 seconds for the R2S. But a much bigger issue is that after taking the photos, the software starts processing the files to stitch the images and produce the automatic panel, and it remains in processing mode. I have tried dozens of panorama and this has happened to me all the times. The icon of the shutter remains busy with an X inside and we cannot do anything else. The only way to free the shutter is to land the aircraft and then take off again. Of course, this is not convenient at all. There might be a problem with my unit so let me know in a comment below if the same happens to you. Furthermore, at the end of the process, the auto panel is not present in the album, as it should be, but at least we have the individual files saved in RAW. With RAW files I can try to get rid of the strong vignette, but as expected in many cases I get some strong color banding at the stitching points between two photos. When using JPEG file, the profile of the lens is automatically corrected, so we don't have the same issue with the stitching points. But in both cases, the resulting image is way overexposed, something that cannot be fixed in post processing. As an example, this panel was carefully taken right after sunset with a nice soft light, perfect condition. But as you can see, the sky is still overexposed beyond repairs. So, the automatic process for taking panorama with the Nano Plus is completely useless. If someone was trying on purpose to do the worst possible panorama interface, it would be difficult to do worse than this. Luckily, we can do the whole process manually. It's not difficult at all, much more versatile, and the results are excellent. Shooting manual pano is much easier than most people think and solves all the issues discussed above. We also get much more flexibility, as we can freely choose the portion of the scene and the number of photos. Here's how to do it. In the meantime, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, it really helps the channel. 
The vertical menu on the main screen we choose Pro, so that we can finally use manual exposure. Make sure that the shutter icon is white for photo. If it is red for video, tap on this icon. In the settings we go to the camera tab and choose the grid with the rule of thirds. He has two vertical and two horizontal lines, dividing the screen in thirds. Perfect to compute the correct overlapping. Since we will be shooting in pro mode, we don't have to worry about the format for the panel, but make sure that the one for photo pro is set to JPEG plus raw. A copy of each will be stored in memory, so with just one go we can process both kind of panels and choose the one that works best. We have the possibility to add the defog option, which is very useful in hazy conditions, or to improve the structure of the sky, but this time we leave it off. Now we inspect the area we want to include in our panel and focus on the brightest part. A couple of things to be aware of with panorama in general. If you are going for a sphere one, the sun will be in the frame, so it is better to do it only near sunset or sunrise or with the sun covered by clouds. In all other conditions it is better to shoot other kinds of panoramas, staying away from the sun. It is also better to avoid large areas containing water, as the software will have a hard time finding reference points for stitching. Let's say that we want to make a wide angle panel made by three rows, each row made by as many images we need to cover the desired scene. After having exposed for the brightest part of the scene, making sure that the highlights are not burnt with the use of the histogram, we move to the left border of the scene and tilt the gimbal all the way up to start our top row. We take the first photo and we make a note of a reference point on the vertical line to the right. Then we pan to the right, bringing that point to the left edge of the frame and take the second photo. This way we have an overlap of around 33%, one third of each photo, which is excellent. We keep panning to the right and take photos until we cover our scene. In our case, 5 photos are enough for the top row. The last one to the right is a bit too close to the sun, but we might crop part of it during post-processing. This time we take a reference point at the bottom of the frame and tilt the gimbal down until this point is lined up with the top line. We take a photo and then pan to the left, repeating the process, this time for the 5 photos composing the central row. Finally, we tilt down the camera again and take 5 more photos for the bottom row. When copying the photos from the memory card to our computer, it is better to set up an individual file for each panel. We can then put them together using software packages like Lightroom, PTGuy and so on. I use on one photo row. All I have to do is to select the images and click on the icon panel. Let's see the results. These are not the light condition that I would normally choose. I much prefer to have clouds in the sky. They add depth and interest to the scene and soften the light. But for the purpose of comparing the results, a cloudless sky is useful as it will show any issue of color banding at the stitching point. The panel made from JPEG files doesn't show any issue in the sky and responds well to color grading. On the top right edge we are a bit too close to the sun, therefore the sky is a bit too bright. But I was expecting this to happen and we can recompose the image with a bit of cropping. With raw files the result is very similar. There is just a little bit of color banding in the sky at the stitching points. But that is due to the light conditions in the middle of the sunny day with a cloudless sky. Much better result would be obtained on a day with clouds, early in the morning or late in the afternoon. With raw files, the outcome at the stitching point can be improved with a larger overlap between each photo, as only the central part will be used. As you can see, it is possible to obtain excellent panoramas with a Nano Plus, even though the panel function is practically useless.
Hotel has managed to create a drone with astonishing video and photo quality, but they should start to put some attention to software development and to listen to users' feedback if they want to compete in this market. I still love this drone and use it a lot, despite all the shortcomings. Click on this link to watch my analysis of photography with the Nano Plus. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy this video. Thank you.